and welcome back to Testing Basics. Today I'm going to be doing high heeled ankle boots. Not ankle boots actually, just boots in general. We've got some over the knee and some ankle boots. This is the third boots Testing Basics I've done. So I did ones with the small block heel and also complete flat ones. Um, I thought high heels would be a bit fun. I've never done a high heel Testing Basics before. As always, we've got five from high street to high end. Let's start with our cheapest option, which are from Ego. Now, Ego are in the kind of realm of like public desire. I don't know what the other ones are called, but you know that really super affordable shoe brands, which is everywhere at the moment. Uh, and they have, I've never been, I've never had any shoes from them before, and I've never been on their websites before, but I couldn't believe how much choice they have. They have an incredible amount of choice of like heels, boots, flats, trainers, sandals, everything. Just so much choice, it was quite impressive. So, I went with some over the knee boots. Over the knee boots are everywhere on the high street at the moment um, and I thought I would give these ones a go seeing as they were an incredibly affordable £34.99. The heel height, all of the heels I have here are around 4 inches, a bit under, sort of 3.5 to 4 inches. These are 3.8 inches um, and I do really like the shape of the heel and the shape of the actual shoe itself. This section I think it kind of has quite an expensive and classic look to it. Um, they do bag and give a little bit here, um, possibly because the velvet material is really, really thin. Like, I don't know if you can see as I'm holding it just how thin. There's no structure in this section at all. And also, when you tie it in on your thigh, um, it kind of ruches out a little bit over the edge of the tie. I think you can hopefully be able to tell what I mean when I'm showing you them on. So with the over the knee boots, I'm going to make sure to wear them two ways actually. One over jeans and also against a bare leg to really see how they stay up because that's the main thing I'm always looking for with over the knee boots. I do have very slim legs and I have quite big knobbly knees so that my knees help me keep shoes like this on but like around my ankles and stuff are really slim so I'm always conscious of how much these kind of a boot can fall down on my legs. So that's one thing that I'm going to be looking out for and just really I guess how comfortable they are. So that was the first pair, true to size by the way, I got a size 40, a UK size 7, which is my normal size. Ego, 34.99. Let's move on to Topshop. These were £89. They have three and a half inch heels, so a little bit lower than the Ego ones. And I think these are absolutely fabulous. I love how these look. Love the heel, love this angle on the inside. They have a really nice point to them and then they have this flap detail here. One thing they do have, which I'm gonna show you in a close up, is um, almost like a gray wash over them, which I think is gonna work really well to combat how easily these will mark and stain. Um, that's what I'm hoping anyway. So that's why I'm assuming they've done that style. I think it works really well actually. And they just look absolutely fantastic on the foot. Amazing with denim. Also true to size, size 40, Topshop, £89. Moving on from there, we've got And Other Stories. Oh, I should just grab them. These were £125. This heel height is, I think, 3.9 inches. Um, it, what it said online isn't, isn't right. I think it's 3.9 inches, so just under 4 inches. I've got these in a size 40, and they fit true to size. And again, they have a really simple style to them, like the Topshop ones, but a beautiful heel. This time they have a slight curve on the outside and then a really straight line on the inside. Um, and it's such a classic boot, this. Like, you just know how much you can be able to wear a boot like this. But I love that, just the detailing on the heel. It makes it a little bit more exciting. And also the pull tab here always looks really cool sitting over the back of your jeans if you like to wear slightly cropped denim. I always think that's a nice little touch. So these are probably the most sort of classic pair that I've got here. They're absolutely stunning. Um, that was And the Stories, £125. They're also available in black as well, and they are real suede too. Okay, next one is Kurt Geiger. I paid £180 for these, and then a week later they went in the sale to £129. So that's not great for you guys, but really, really flipping annoying for me because it was literally the week after it and I'd already worn them. So they're currently online for £129. Um, they have a 3.9 inch heel, so same as the And Other Stories one, but a platform which I would say is around an inch, I guess, a bit less possibly. Um, these are super on trend. Platforms are everywhere at the moment. I'm loving the look for boots because um, Louis Vuitton had a really cool pair and also Burberry did um, of platform, clumpy, heavy boots, especially with this really heavy tread on the sole as well. And I really, really liked how it looked. So 
I just, these are possibly my favourite in terms of how they look actually out of all the ones we've got. And they're also patent leather which is everywhere and shoes are a good way to dip your toes into that trend if you're not feeling quite brave enough to go for like the pants or the skirts or the coats which are everywhere. I personally love all of it. Um, but I think this is a good way to introduce yourself into it. Size wise, go for a size up. I initially got my usual size, which was a 40, and then walked around with them at home and thought, ah, these are gonna be toe squishers. So I switched for a size eight, a size 41, and they fit perfectly. So I recommend going a size up, especially if you're gonna wanna wear thick socks with them to keep really warm as well. Okay, so for the final pair of shoes, I'm doing a huge, huge price jump. Normally I stagger it a bit more than this, but there was none that I really liked that I could find online between like the 200 and 400 pound mark. Um, and I thought there's no point in just spending that much money just for the sake of filling that gap in the prices. So there's so there's so many at the moment on the high street that I'm really loving. So though we've got four high street ones there. Um, and so this is a massive jump because we're going up to 650 pounds. Now you guys have seen these shoes before. They're incredibly popular. They are the Stuart Weitzman Highland over the knee boots. An absolute like Instagram favourite. There's not a day that I go on Instagram and don't see these boots on somebody. So these have been very kindly sent to me from Russell and Bromley. So if you want to try them on, mental note, you can go into Russell and Bromley and try them on. And they do have all the colours as well and the different heel heights. I've got the Lowland ones already, which is the other ones with the block heel. Um, but these are the ones that you see the most often. So they're £650, they fit true to size, they have a three and a half inch heel. So they are lower than the Ego ones. Um, and I got them in the black suede, a beautiful, lovely, thick suede. Again, similar to the Ego ones, they just have the tie at the top to fasten them. Uh, oh no, actually, the Ego ones have a zip at the side to get them on, whereas these are completely pull on. And the difference is that it means they fit really, really close to the leg, much closer. And you can even see from the shape of the shoe here, the way it goes in at the ankle and then out a little bit for the calf. And they really fit really well on the leg and they're easy to pull on and off. I have deliberately chosen to do the cheapest and the most expensive as an over the knee boot. Obviously there is over a £600 difference between these two which is just huge and I will of course bear that in mind. They're not going to be the same. These aren't going to be as good as these. You just, it would be absolute insanity if they were and they're not just from holding them now. They're absolutely not. But the reason I went for such a difference is because the high street and especially these super affordable brands have so many over the knee boots at the moment and I see a lot of people wearing them, they're hugely popular, they have tons of different styles and equally to this a lot of people have them and seem to absolutely swear by them, they're the kind of shoe you see people then going and getting in a different colour as well which is always a sign of how much you love something isn't it? So I thought it'd be interesting to see whether if two well loved style of the same thing, which one actually comes out on top. That's all of them, you know how it works, I'm now going to wear these over the next week, I'm going to show you different outfits with them as we go, and then I'll share our final thoughts at the very end of this video. I've got on these cool Topshop ones. Harry just said they were like North Fielding boots, but I don't know, I think they're so cool. You said that in a good way, though. You meant yeah. In a good way. So I've got them on with these jeans. These are quite old now, they're from ASOS. They're called the ASOS Carrot Jeans. Uh, I've got them slightly turned up at the front, but not much. A black knit from Lara Do and then my trusty and other stories camel coat. I'm going down to London and so taking a big bag full of stuff so I've got my Celine belt bag. I absolutely love this outfit and I love how much the boots just make it feel like really, um, just really good basically. <laughs> I couldn't think of a word there. Um, and yeah, the rest are super, super simple because they are so in your face. It's raining today so what I'm interested to see is how they hold up to a bit of wear and tear when it's a wet, typical British winter's day. So that's what I'm gonna be looking out for, especially today. Hey guys, oh my God, my feet hurt. I've had these on all day and they are toe pinches around your big toe. Just gonna see if I've got a blister. Oh, a little one, nothing too bad actually. But it's just getting it, both shoes are getting me on the inside of my big toe on both feet. Oh, sorry about that guys, my camera just died. I just have charged it up and I'm back now with the boots. So as I was saying, they've rubbed the inside of both of my big toes. There's no marks on them whatsoever and I think even if they did get a bit splashed by the rain, it wouldn't be that noticeable because it has that running through it anyway. Um, but they haven't really marked, well they haven't marked at all on the heel even. Both pairs are looking really, really good. They're wearing in nicely over the toes so I'm hoping that they will give with a little bit of wear. I have had them on for a long time today, but I do have blisters. So 
good and bad for these. I absolutely love how they look though. So for me, I'm willing to suffer a little bit and see if I can break them in a bit more and make them comfortable because of how much I love how they look. Hey guys, so I've got the Kurt Geiger boots on today. It's actually the second time that I've worn these. I'll just pop a cutaway of the first outfit here. And I've just been wearing them to kind of nip out, um, which is why I've worn them twice. I haven't worn them for as long as the Topshop ones. They are so comfortable though, definitely more comfortable than the Topshop ones. Um, and today I've still got like the blisters on the side of my toe from the Topshop ones and they're not even hurting remotely in these. They're really easy to walk in. I absolutely love them. I love how they look. It's freezing cold today. It has been snowing in Manchester. So I'm wearing these jeans from Paige. I'm really liking wearing like a frayed hem with these boots. I think it looks really good. And then an acne jumper. This fleecy lined coat, which is from Lara Dudes. Hat from Cost. And then I just had my um, Fendi Toujours bag today. Um, so yeah, massively impressed with these boots so far. I absolutely love them and love how they look and just everything about them, love them. Hey guys, so I've got Stuart Whiteson boots on, on today. Um, so I'm gonna show you a different way that I would wear over knee boots as well, where you don't just wear them over skinny jeans, which you know is what you see all the time. So that one I'll probably wear with the ego boots. Um, for these ones, I've got on some black skinny jeans from All Saints, a big hoodie also from All Saints. Cashmere turtle neck underneath from Johnston's of Elgin, and this blazer, which is from a brand called Frequent, which I got off Zalando. And I'm going to take as well my, what are they? Barcelona bag, like the us. Um, so, the first thing I would say about these is that I always feel like I can't, I do have slim legs and really slim above my knee, but I've just been walking around the house without them done up, and they don't slouch very much at all, even when they're not pulled tight, they kind of keep really nice and slim over the, over the leg. So I'm gonna see how comfortable they are. I'm about to do quite a bit of walking as well, so let's see how I got on with this heel. Um, but yeah, this is the outfit. Just got back in. Um, I've not had them on for very long, these boots, but we have just walked a lot. They haven't fallen down at all. They've been really, really good. They are harder to walk in than the Topshop and the Kirk Geiger ones, but they are higher and the heel is thinner, so that is to be expected. Um, they're not hard to walk in, but the top shop and the Kirk Gag ones are effortless to walk in for me, like just as easy as walking in flats, whereas these, I can't walk as quickly, but we just had a nice stroll out and they were fine for that. Um, but yeah, the main thing is that they've not fallen down, so I'm really, really pleased with that. And yeah, well, you know how I got on with them when I wear them without shoes on as well. Hey guys, so I just quickly wanted to show you how I'm wearing the Stuart Whites and Boots today. So this has been my test with them against bare legs. Because I have them under these trousers and I don't have tights on or anything. So they've been holding up really well, just exactly the same as they did with jeans on pretty much. They do drop a little bit around the ankles, um, but I don't feel like they're not, not in an annoying way where I've got to pull them up the whole time. So I'm really pleased with that. Um, what I want to show you is with over the knee boots, you can wear them under trousers like this. You can wear them under like straight leg jeans, boyfriend jeans or whatever um, for a winter look. And I really like how it looks with the boot just right under the trouser. But because they sit so tight on your leg, you can't see the line at all of where the boot is under the pants. So it looks really smart like for work, under suit pads, or like I said, with jeans or whatever. So like a knee high boot, unless it was super tight, the hard to find tight ones you would be able to see the edge of the boots, so it kind of fits really, really well. I just wanted to show you that. So that's how I've been wearing them today. Um, again, super comfortable actually. I feel like I've gotten into the hang of walking in them a little bit more and they've been really easy. So the trousers I've got on from Jigsaw, just a straight leg, navy blue suit pad, Lara Duke jumper, and this leather jacket's from PSC. And it says tonight on never on the back. A bit cool. Hey everybody, this is the second outing on the and the stories boots. Um, today I've just got them on with some straight leg ASOS jeans, uh, John Lewis cashmere jumper, Topshop fur fur coat. I'll pop in and cut away now the other outfit that I wore with them. They're really comfortable. They are quite high and they feel quite high, but to say how high they are, they're really easy to walk in. I wouldn't necessarily want to walk loads and loads and loads in them, but they don't rub at all. It's just the height of the heel that make it a bit more tiring to walk in them. And I think they look so good. I absolutely love the heel. I love the length of them and everything like that. 
and as I say, relatively comfortable, well completely comfortable, they don't rub, so they're not uncomfortable, they're just quite a high heel, but still would 100% recommend and I would say that most people would be absolutely fine walking in these. Hey guys, sorry about the quality here, I'm just actually filming on my phone, because I'm out and about in the ego boots over the knee boots. I've walked round the corner from my flat and let me show you this. They're falling down there by my ankles. How bad is that? I've literally just walked around the corner. I'm gonna stop now and tie them up again and give it another go. Let's see what happens. Okay, so I just tightened them up and filmed the whole time I was walking. I walked for exactly four minutes and 22 seconds. They haven't slouched as bad as before, but they are still below the knees and one side has completely undone and I did a double knot bow, so I'm gonna have to go back and change my shoes because I can't walk around constantly pulling these up. I can walk for four minutes then. Obviously that's not very long at all to be hot footing it around a city and completely falling down, so not the best. I'm gonna go back inside now and actually I'll show you my full outfit now as well. Okay guys, needless to say, these aren't the best, let me just pull them back up. Um, I'm not even going to attempt to wear these without jeans on because if they fall like this, fall down like this with jeans then they're just going to be the worst on bare legs. But it's just, that is ridiculous, I, I've walked for less than five minutes. As I said, I do have slim legs but I mean they've got a tie at the back and that should at least, I mean you wouldn't expect them to fall fully down over your knee, like slouch a bit is to be expected but to fall down completely is just ridiculous. They were, are easy to walk in there, if I'm trying to be a bit positive, they were easy to walk in and relatively comfortable, but by no means no over the knee boot when it falls down to your ankles, basically. The outfit I had it on with, kind of lazy, all saint skinny jeans, a Lara Duped, cashmere knit, a Ritzia belt, cross scarf, cross hat, Isla Morant uh, blazer. But yeah, not impressed with these at all. Right, so on to the final thoughts, and then I get straight into this. Um, predictably and as to be expected I am going to put the ego ones in last place just because of how severely they fell down they did not serve their purpose as an over the knee boot whatsoever um, so that I'm not completely negative about them the positive I do have to say is that they were quite comfortable they've got like a squishiness to the inside sole of the shoe so they were quite comfortable to walk in for the very short amount of time I had them on and easy enough to walk in despite being a relatively high heel so perhaps that ankle boots in this style might be a bit better um, but it is, you know, it's a cheap boot and it doesn't even work as an over the knee boot so even though it is cheap it's still a waste of £35 because you can't even wear them as an over the knee boot um, and I had them tight, I mean there's so much string here as well for the tie like they're just, I don't really recommend them I have to say um, at the other four pairs, I really like all four of them, actually. They're all boots that I think I'm going to wear a lot going forward. I am going to have to put the Topshop ones in the next spot because these are the only ones that rubbed me in any way whatsoever. I did actually wear these very, very briefly the other day to shoot some outfit pictures and I have them on with no socks on. And they didn't hurt at all, so I'm wondering, because they sort of rubbed at this point on the outside of my big toe, I'm thinking that it might have been... You know, you know on socks at the toe bit where the seam is across the toe that's sometimes a bobbly bit on the end? Because this is such a close fitting shoe, I'm thinking that is what rubbed it. So maybe if you wore thin socks with it, they might have been a bit better. Um, but nonetheless, they did rub me and they are very tight fitting over the foot. Won't put me off wearing them though in the future because I absolutely love how they look. I think they're a really, really good design. Out of all the Topshop shoes I have, these aren't the most expensive feeling. Um, they have kind of quite a plasticky feeling leather and the inside is a bit rough and it just doesn't have a great finish to it I have to say but in terms of the style of them I really like them and like them enough to wear them lots in the future so top shop in the next spot I love the three remaining pairs loads and recommend them all wholeheartedly. I think they're great great shoes but I'm going to pop the and other stories one in the next spot um, the suede isn't the most durable suede I've ever known. To say that I have only worn these, or well, these twice, these ones, they have already got some scuffs on them. And I mean, I didn't put any suede protector because I don't put any protector on any of them when I'm filming this, so that they're all like a level playing field. So you, I would recommend 100% you would need suede protector with these because it is, doesn't seem like the most durable suede. And to say they were £125, they, I mean, they're super minimal price point because the Kurt Geiger ones 
when I last checked were available in the sale for just four pounds more. I feel like these are extremely basic for that price point. Um, but they are very, very comfortable. So again, I will definitely wear these more going forward because they were comfortable. The heel is absolutely gorgeous and they were easy enough to walk into, nice to walk in. It's just, I don't think they're gonna last very long. And I don't think it's a cheap shoe. I don't class something that's over hundred pounds to be cheap. So not the most durable, but still do like them and would recommend. In the next spot, I'm gonna go for the Stuart Weitzman Highland boots. Primarily because, yes, I get the fuss over these boots. I understand why they are, they are so popular. Um, obviously, comparing them to the Ego boots, I think I would have been way more forgiving on the Ego ones, and I really wanted to be able to say the High Street do it really well, especially that extremely affordable section, but because they didn't even perform as an over-the-knee boot, it does make these seem even more wonderful because not only did they stay above the knee, um, they fit really, really tight and they didn't slouch at all. And I feel like because of the slim fittingness, I was able to wear them under trousers, which is a way that I really like to wear over-the-knee boots. And it means it's just going to be a more versatile shoe, which is obviously incredibly important given the really hefty price tag that is on these. Um, so on the surface, yes, I do absolutely think that that price tag is justified because I think they've created such a classic shoe that you would never need to buy an over-the-knee style boot again. Um, the suede, especially when you compare it to the Under the Stories boots, is way more durable. As I said, neither of these have been protected, have spray protector on them, suede protector spray put on them, and these have marked considerably less, which does make me feel hopeful that going forward they will wear really well. Um, to say that I've worn these twice and walked a lot in them, the sole has barely worn down whatsoever, and I like the fact it comes with a rubber sole on them, so I think that they, they are quite a practical shoe, and again, will last a long time, which is incredibly important considering the price tag, so... The answer is yes, I get the fuss over these. I think they're a really great style of over the knee boot. And it leaves these babies in first place. I absolutely love, love these shoes. These are the most comfortable out of all of them. Not a single point on the foot does this hurt. As I just said, they're really easy to walk and can go all day in these. I think they've done a great design. I think they've tapped into the trends in a really good way while still being quite a classic piece too. Um, and really, really easy to wear. I think this would look good on so many people and it's a good trend piece that also will hopefully really last a long time and I say hopefully because from what I can tell I think it will the way that the um, leather is giving is really really nice and I love how that kind of crinkled up patent leather looks I think it looks lovely um, and I mean again there's hardly any mark on the tread but we've got a bit of a practical sole here like with the Stuart Whites and Wands where you're not even slippy like you can walk about in these in the rain and even if it was a bit snowy or whatever so it's kind of a really good practical winter boot as well um, and yeah they kind of were ticking in that sense and practicality and how I feel they're going to wear long term they were ticking all the same boxes as the Stuart Whites and Wands but for a fraction of the price as well um, and while the styles aren't comparable, obviously they're very, very different, these just have to come out on top because I love them. These are the ones I've been the most excited to wear as well every single time I've been pulling them out. So that is Top Space to Kurt Geiger. I don't know if I said, but these are the KG by Kurt Geiger range as well. So love them, absolutely love them. Okay guys, I hope you have found that one interesting and have enjoyed it. I'm a bit gutted that I've had to be so critical about the Ego ones because I was sort of hoping that I would really i've always had my hesitations for those brands anyway but i was hoping that i would be really like oh my god i love them um but no they just were not the best at all so sadly i wouldn't really recommend those but the other four pairs i do really like and if you get the top shop ones try thin socks and you might not have the problem that i did and um, if you have a wide foot i would steer clear of those altogether and remember to size up in the kurt geiger ones if you can hear beeping, it's a flipping washing machine, so I'm sorry about that. Um, but thank you so much for watching this one. I hope you have enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one.